So welcome. Here I, we are again for another week of activities and teaching and things going on. And I don't know how you guys have been doing at home. Are you bored? Do you, are you get hot outside? Um, are things being canceled still? Or have you been able to go on vacation or go swimming or do things like that? Guys, I don't know. It just seems like our world is ever changing. We always have things going on. But this week, I wanted to we're, we're planning another week where we find out about how we focus on God. He's never changing. He's so consistent. So this week and today, we're gonna, I'm going to teach you a Bible story about how we can really focus on God's Word. I'm going to be challenging you to memorize the scripture uh, each day instead of one all week. And then also, I'm going to be challenging you with God's Word to, to memorize some things and to learn some things that maybe you haven't been. So this week's going to be a challenging week of, uh, I think we have three days with some videos every day of some fun activities, a great Bible story lesson, and then some challenging biblical things for you to learn and wrestle with at home. And maybe this is going to give you some content and some things that you can be doing in case you're sitting at home kind of bored and uh, ask your mom or dad, hey, what can we do next? Uh, Mr. Casey wants to bring some awesome activities for you guys to you, to your TV, and to your home this week. So here, watch along with me. Today, I'm going to teach you a new song. So I'm going to give you the instructional video to where you can watch this instructional video uh, right after this, right after I'm done talking. And then a little bit later on in the video, I'm going to give you the full dance portion to just sing and dance and learn this song uh, this week in each of our videos. And then I may add one more song, but I'm going to keep you guessing what's coming next. So have fun learning this song now, and I'll see you in just a little bit. Hey guys, we're going to do the dance moves for Know You More. For the first half of the verse, we go right, right, clap, left, left, clap, right, right, clap, left, left, clap, until the second half of the verse where we go, you made this heart to know your love. I stand in awe of everything you've done. Now for the chorus. I will live my life to know you more. I will live my life for you, Lord. I want to hear you speak, follow your lead. You give me everything I need, left over right. I will live my life to know you more. To know you more. And here's the bridge. Heavenly Father above every other, I want to know you more. That repeats twice. Let's put it all together with the music. So guys, I want to share this Bible story with you today and challenge you uh, with it about focusing in on God's Word. And so here's a passage from 2 Kings chapter 22 and 23. It's about a, a, a boy named Josiah. Josiah was eight years old and he became king. So in the, the, the books of 1 and 2 Kings, it's about 
uh, the story of all these kings after King Saul, King David, King Solomon. After those guys were kings, then there was just a lot of kings that followed them for sometimes a few years, sometimes a lot of years, but there wasn't consistent uh, a kingship and following of God. And so here's a story of a guy named, or a boy, eight-year-old boy named Josiah. He became king when his father passed away. And so why did his father pass away? Let me give you a little bit of insight into this. Second uh, Kings chapter 21 talks about king named Manasseh. Manasseh was very evil. He set up all kinds of uh, fake gods, worshipped, kind of destroyed the temple by setting up all these fake gods. And then it says King Ammon came after that. A-M-O-N, King Ammon, uh, was king of Judah next. And he was 22 years old when he became king, but he, he only reigned in Jerusalem for two years. Two years. And then this is what it says in Second Kings 21, verses 25. As for other events of Ammon's reign and what he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the king of, of Judah? He was buried in the tomb in the garden, and his son Josiah succeeded him. So basically, it doesn't even include the things that King Ammon did. And when it talks about King Manasseh, it talks about how evil and awful he was because he worshipped false god and went away from the one true God that Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, King David, um, King Solomon, all of these gods had worshipped and started in the, in the nation of Israel, in the nation of, of Judah. And so here when it becomes chapter 22, 2 Kings chapter 22, it says, Josiah was eight years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 31 years. So what Josiah became known for was rebuilding the temple. When he was rebuilding the temple, it talks about in 2 Kings chapter 22, he sent a priest to go out and uh, find out what was going on, pay the people to start rebuilding the temple. When they were rebuilding the temple, they found these scrolls of scripture from long ago. So the priest brought them to King Josiah and read them out loud. And when it, in verse 11 of 2 Kings chapter 22, verse 11, it says, when the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his robes. He tore his robes and he repented. And not only did he repent, but he called the nation to repent, the whole nation, and read aloud God's word. And when they heard, they followed after King Josiah and repented as well. And God healed their nation. And Josiah became a, God, a king that followed after God and, and honored God. And when he heard the words of, of, of the law that was read of the book of the Bible, he knew it was truth, and he knew his fathers and grandfathers had not been living it, had not been showing that as king, and so he repent. That's why he tore his clothes because he wanted to repent of being away from God's word and follow after God. And so they took back the the, the book the Bible and began reading it and living it and honoring God and the relationship grew during that time and during his kingship. And so one of the reasons why I wanted to focus on this passage today is because I think in this day and time when we've had a lot of different and craziness going on between the coronavirus, maybe social injustice and riots, if you've seen some of that stuff on TV or heard about it from maybe your parents, it's like, all of these things going on, school being canceled in the spring, and then we not know what's going to happen with school in the fall. We're still not meeting as children's ministry here at church. So there's just a lot of changes, a lot of things going on. One of the things I wanted to do this week is challenge you to focus in on your scripture. I'm not sure if you've been reading it every day and doing maybe a soap or doing a quiet time, maybe your family has, but one of the things I just wanted to be concerned about is is that maybe like the, the people before Josiah, they had hidden away the word of God. They hadn't been using it. And that way they didn't know where it was. They weren't living it because they weren't reading it. And I think that that happens sometimes to us. Sometimes for us, we take our Bible and we just close it when we get home 
and we just leave it somewhere on the shelf and we don't, we don't come back to it. We don't open it every day ourselves. You, no matter if you're eight years old, 10 years old, uh, six years old, or 12 years old, you guys should be reading a little portion of the Bible every day, every day yourself, by yourself, and just reading it. And if you can't read very well, then you can get someone to read it to you. But I also wanted to turn and look at another passage of Scripture in 2 Timothy 3, 16. You, you can turn along with me if you'd like. Um, if you have a Bible, grab 2 Timothy 3, 16. And it says this, All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. So that's a little bit, that's two verses actually. It's uh, 16 and 17 of 2 Timothy chapter 3. So again, I want to talk a little bit about this verse and how it ties into our story of Josiah and maybe how it connects to us. It says, all scripture is breathed out by God. So basically, when we read God's word, this Bible, we know it is words from God. We can hear from God. We can know God by reading his word. When we don't read it, we, don't, we can't hear from him. We don't hear from him usually. And not only that, but we, maybe we don't honor him. We think we're being a good person. Maybe we're nice. Maybe we um, can do good things in, uh, in our eyes. But we're not honoring God if we're not reading a scripture and living it out. So it says all scripture is breathed out by God. And then the next thing it says profitable for teaching, which is what I'm doing with you right now. We're just looking at scripture and we're teaching it. We're learning from it. You can do that by yourself. You don't need me. You don't even need to be here at church on a Sunday morning or a Wednesday night. You guys can be learning from the Bible every day on your own. If you'll just read one or two passages of Scripture, maybe two verses from maybe the book of Proverbs or a psalm, the book of Psalm, or you could even read from uh, Ephesians or Philippians. Right now we're going through the book of Philippians in church. Just read one of the passages on your own. Look at what it says. We've done soap before. You do observation, application, and then you pray about it. And um, you guys can definitely be doing that. Now, some of you may be. You may be saying, Mr. Casey, I'm doing that every day. Well, that's great. But I, I want to challenge those of you that aren't. Those of you that aren't picking up the Bible on your own every day and doing just a little soap where you read a scripture, you write down some observations of some things either you understand or don't understand. What is it? How does it apply to you? Whatever age you are, what is one thing that you could say this applies to me? So, for example, when you say when we read this 316, 2 Timothy 316, all scripture is profitable for teaching for reproof, for correction, and training in righteousness. For example, an application could be, well, God's word, if I read it every day, will, will teach me. It will help me to, be, um, to train for righteousness, to be more like God. And I want that for me, and I want that for you, but do you want that for yourself? So uh, the Bible is good for teaching, for correction, uh, and, and for training us towards righteousness, to be more like God to be holy as he is holy. And then verse 17 says this, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. Now, that's one thing that I want to remind you of, is that if you have Jesus in your heart, if you have asked him to be your Lord and Savior, if you've been baptized, if you've taken all these steps, then you have the ability to serve God and to share him with others around you. Now, we've been maybe in our homes and not out and about very much, um, but there's ways that we can still be living out the gospel in our everyday actions, in how we uh, respond to our parents, maybe in how we respond to our brothers or our sisters, or maybe you've been around some family members. How have you responded uh, to them and to situations that you have uh, in your life? Do you respond in a demonstration that shows that you've been reading the scripture, you've been studying it and following what God says? Because God says be, for example, in James, it says be slow to anger, be quick to listen. Are you quick to get angry? You know, because if so, then you're not following God's word. God wants you to be slow to anger, quick to listen to others, um, and 
Maybe another one is, is honor your mother, mother and father. Have you been doing that? When they ask you to clean the kitchen, do you get mad and throw a fit? Or do you say, yes, ma'am, yes, sir, and go and do it and o- obey? Because when you obey your parents, you're obeying and honoring God. And so scripture is the central focus of all of that. And so this week, I want us to focus on some scripture passages. Um, And so this first one is, I would love to challenge you today to memorize 2 Timothy 3, 16. And if you want to, 17. 3, 16 and 17. And if you want to do an NIV, you can do it NIV, or if you have a different translation, the one I read from is English Standard Version, ESV. And so that's just what that, where I read it from, ESV. But you can memorize scripture. And so 2 Timothy 3.16 is going to be our key verse to working in scripture this week. So I want to ask you a couple of questions as we wrap up our time of teaching today. And I want you to actually maybe grab a piece of paper and a pencil and write some of these down because I want you to answer and tell someone about your answers as I ask these questions to you. So here's the first question that I want to ask you today is, why would you say it's important to discover what God's word says? I want you to answer that question. Why is it important for you to discover what God's word says? I'd love for you to just write that question down and then maybe answer it in a minute uh, because I'm going to give you another question. So question number two is, What would you say is the best part about the Bible? What would you say is the best part about the Bible? Okay. And then the third and final question. I want you to write down this question and answer it again for yourself. How is the Bible different from other books that you may read? I don't know about this summer if you've been reading a lot of books. I've heard several of our wedge kids have been just reading and reading and reading and enjoying that. But how is the Bible different than other books that we read? And so those are three questions I want you to have written down. I'll go back over them real quick in case you missed it. And then I want you to answer that and share your answers with someone else. So the first one that I asked was, why is it important for you to discover what God's word says? Okay. The second one is, what would you say is the best part about the Bible? And then thirdly, is how is the Bible different than all the other books that you read? If you read books, or how is the Bible different than other books that people read, if you're not a reader? So answer those three questions for me, and then share them with someone else. And tomorrow, I'm going to share a different Bible story with you and a different challenge. And then even later on in in our video today, I'm going to share a couple other things that I want to challenge you to do when it comes to God's Word.
So one of the things I'm going to challenge you this week to do is to see if you can memorize the books of the Bible. Can you, do you know how many books of the Bible there are? So as you look at this poster, uh, over here is the Old Testament, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Uh, and so as we see, it's color-coded. I'm not sure if you can see that. I'm pretty sure you can. Uh, that is the law, the books of the law. And then as we read Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, books of the law. And then Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther. Those are all books of history. Books of history. And so, boom, Joshua to Esther are books of history. Okay, and then as we move to Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, those are considered poetry and wisdom books in the Bible. Poetry and wisdom books. Did you guys know that? And then moving on, the next book is the book of Isaiah. So Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. Those are considered major prophets. Do you know why they're considered major prophets? Because they're big books. They're Long books is why. And then next is the minor prophets, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, and Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi. So all of those from Hosea to Malachi are all minor prophets. Now, can you guess why they're called minor prophets? Hopefully you guessed they're short books, right? They're just short little books of these prophets towards the end of the Old Testament. And so that is Genesis to Malachi is the Old Testament. Now, how many books of the Bible is that? Do you guys know? Have you ever counted? So I think it's 27 Check me. Let's check together and see if I'm right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39. What? I was wrong. There's 39. I think I got the Old Testament and the New Testament mixed up. But how many were there? 39? So now as we look at the New Testament, we look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts. So Matthew, Mark, Luke, John are part of the gospel. That's what Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are all the gospel. Acts is considered a, a history book. It's a history book of how the church began. So it's different. And then as we go to Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, and Philemon. Whew. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, 13 books of the Bible. Do you know who wrote those? Guess. Take a guess. Who wrote them? So there's a man named Paul. Y'all should know Paul, right? All those are letters of Paul, 13 books of the New Testament that the Apostle Paul wrote. And then as we get into Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Jude, all those are considered general letters. General letters. They're just letters um, that are considered general letters. And then the last one is the book of Revelation is considered part of prophecy. So how many books are in the New Testament? So what did we say? 39 in the old. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 25, 26, 27. Yes. 27. So I got a while ago, I got Old Testament and New Testament mixed up. 27 books in the New Testament. 
So what is that all together? How many books of the Bible are there? 39, 27, 66. 66 books of the Bible. And I wonder how many of you could find one of the books of the Bible faster than me. All right, guys. Hey, welcome to today's activity. We're going to create a little experiment together. And so here I have a ton of supplies laid out on my table. And so we got some popsicle sticks. We got some erasers. We got some post-it notes, some starburst. Uh, we got some, what are these called? Chopsticks. Oh, holding them wrong. Chopsticks. I don't know if you have any of this laying around your house. You need some spoon, a spoon or a couple of spoons, and some rubber bands. And so I have a lot of this laid out. I don't know if you have anything around your house like this, but anything you can find uh, to make a catapult is what we're going to be making. A catapult. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with my chopsticks today. So if you have something around your house that's like this, some popsicle sticks, uh, you know, again, chopsticks, then I want you to go and grab it to make along with me if you can. So what I'm going to do is take my chopstick, just one of them, take a couple of rubber bands, and I'm going to have to put it around it a couple of times, and then I've got to fit my chopstick, the rubber band. I don't know if y'all can see what I'm doing or not but I'll show you in just a minute. So I basically just tied the rubber band a bunch of times around the spoon and at the end of, because in order to be boom, we might need, we might need a couple more. So again, this is an experiment. This is like a STEM activity and a STEM activity is something that's like, well, how's it gonna turn out? We don't really know for sure. We gotta figure it out together and so that's kind of what I'm doing with you guys. Last time when we did Sports and Fun Arts Camp, we kind of just told you what to do, gave you the instructions to do it, and some of you had to kind of figure it out anyways because it didn't always turn out exactly the way that we mapped it out and kind of told you. This time, I'm just telling you, let's just figure it out together. I don't always have all the right answers on everything. Maybe you guys do, so you have, might have a better way to figure it out. So there, I think that's our spoon situation. We got two rubber bands. We got rubber band wrapped around here. We got a rubber band wrapped around there. And it looks like it might work. So next thing is we're going to take two erasers. I don't know if you have, again, have some of these erasers. They're like triangle square erasers. I think you need two of them. If you only have one, you could try it out with one. But basically, you take it and put it between the two chopsticks. And this is where it gets a little tricky, tricky. So we got to take some rubber bands and you got to rubber band the end, two chopsticks together. So it looks like the best way is to just leave the eraser sitting on the table wrap the rubber band around a bunch of times around the end yep and then also we're going to take another rubber band and just put like down here waiting so not wrap it around a bunch but then we got to space it out and try to fit our erasers in there Without it snapping, ooh, ooh, two, two might be tough. Two erasers, one might be the thing to do instead of two. So, I don't know. How about that? What do you guys think? So, here's where I'm getting some issues though, is keeping the stick twisted the right way. So I got a ping pong ball here. I'm going to try it out and see 
Du Ooh, oh, 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 no, oh, no. Ping pong ball catapult. Ready? Oh, did y'all see that? Man, I chunked that. All right, so the next thing I got is I, I got some little sugar cubes here, which are kind of like marshmallows. Here, I'm going to go off the table a little bit. Can y'all see this? Ready? Boom. Catapult. So we can have some fun because you can move the erasers, you know, closer to the end right here. Or you can move it a little farther away and it might shoot a little less far, not so far. And I hear that chopsticks, the longer the stick with the spoon on it and the higher up you can get will make it shoot farther and bigger. So that's it for today, guys. We've done, well, we, we've learned a new song. We have studied God's Word together. I've challenged you to memorize some books of the Bible as well as 2 Timothy 3.16. So I want to see if you guys can do it. Can you learn all 66 books? I know you can. If you work at it, you spend a little time, you can definitely do it. And then also, can you memorize a, a, a scripture passage, just 2 Timothy 3.16. And you don't have to do it today, but I challenge you to work on that this week and maybe keep working at it until you have it. And until then, um, I'm going to see you tomorrow on another video. Where we're going to have different uh, activities, a different Bible story lesson, and then a different scripture passage as well to look at, to memorize, and to work on. Hopefully you have fun. I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you tomorrow. See you